Hi there, I'm Lisa Wickham and welcome to World Talk. Now, if you're looking at us on Facebook Live or IG Live, well, we are so happy to have you here. This is where I chat with inspiring people from across the world in the expectation that maybe just one thing that they might say through their life might inspire someone out there because just one word can change a life forever. Now, remember, if you want to support this series, you can do so by logging on to www.fundmetnt.com and just support in any way that you can. And you can also subscribe channel where we'll be uploading the conversations after. So my guest today is Dee Dee Kelly, very bubbly, vivacious Hollywood makeup artist. I met her, well, I think I met her a while ago when she came to Trinidad and Tobago to work on Vivica Fox and uh, 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 Tatiana Ali for the Soka Monarch competition, which we have here in Trinidad and Tobago. But earlier this year, we had the opportunity to work together again for the premiere at the Pan African Film Festival uh, in Hollywood of the film Hero. So I invited her to be my next guest, and we're going to be chatting. So come back in 30 seconds for Will Talk. <laughs> This is World Talk, and it's my pleasure to join into the conversation now live on Facebook and Instagram. Dee Dee Kelly. Hi, Dee Dee. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing, girl? I am so good. <laughs> Glad to see you. Glad to see you, even though it's virtual. Let me blow you a virtual kiss. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> good to have you on the program this morning. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, uh, when we last saw each other you had just come off this whirlwind tour with will smith and martin lawrence and just come from japan and all over the world we had no idea did we that the next thing would be a world pandemic and now what's going on oh my God. in the us huh? it was so at that time yeah and now it was so unexpected like it just hit us from nowhere yeah Absolutely. And, you know, we've gone from a pandemic now. I, I think even the media is pretty much silent on the pandemic because it's all about the Black Lives Matter, the protest that's been happening all across the U.S., even where you are in yeah. Los Angeles. Um, are you exposed to it in any way or what's going on where you are? Um, yes. Actually, uh, I've been watching the protest happen all over Los Angeles in different parts. And I live in the Valley. Mm -hmm. which is like 20 minutes from the Kardashians, like mm -hmm. uh, Calabasas. So I was like, they're going to do like really peaceful protests here. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, because you're in Hollywood, you're, you're actually one of the key persons in Black Hollywood when it comes to working with, you know, a number of celebrities. And we're going to talk about you and your journey from Baltimore to Hollywood, but you know, we can't get away from the fact that when we discuss having this, uh, this interview, we had no idea, but now because it's the backdrop, I think it's important for us to weigh in and because you're right there, um, have you yourself been exposed to any sort of discrimination or perhaps any form of profiling? Yes. Just because, um, I live in Hollywood doesn't mean that I'm, I don't see it either. Mm -hmm. I've had the N word said to me. I've even had profiling within our own race. Yeah. Like growing up as a child, I was darker than like my two sisters. Mm -hmm. And I've had people say, oh, you're really cute for a dark skinned girl. Right. Yes. And like within our own race, it was like, it goes deeper than just black and white. It goes but you see, brown and brown and brown. And, and that whole colorism. But you know, um, I think that's learned behavior, isn't it? Yes. Because if you go back to like the house slave and the field slaves and who's darker and who's lighter, and then we ourselves as black people then 
we can to internalize that a bit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm, absolutely. All right. Well, you know, I can't get to, I can't wait to get to the, the stuff with you and to find out your journey from Baltimore. Okay. But before we, before we leave this whole conversation, there, there's another twist to it, which if you are in the industry, you would be exposed to, which is makeup for black skin. So a few years ago, I spoke with a producer who said that um, previously in Hollywood, you'd noticed that um, some of the actors would look off color, especially the darker skin. And that was because they had um, white makeup artists working yeah. on, on black skin and they had no idea how to make up and even the the camera settings were set to grayscale uh, for white skin and not dark skin but then comes people like you and um, black makeup artists who have now changed the tone and what that image that we see ourselves on television or on, on on the big screen yeah mm -hmm. is that something that's at the back of your mind when you're working uh, with your with your people, with your black uh, stars when you're working with them? Yes, yeah, so like one of the number one complaints that I always hear as a makeup artist is that for a black actor or actress, they always say black makeup is because white makeup artists don't know my complexion. And they should because we all have to go to a course and go to school in order to learn skin tones. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, um, they tell us that they have to bring their own makeup or a lot of times they have to go in the bathroom and redo their own makeup uh -huh. because white makeup artists can't get the shade right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. which is puzzling to me because if you know the color wheel and color chart and you know how to look two layers under the skin, you know that there's undertones. Yeah. Just because you're dark skin don't mean that you have a red undertone. Like I'm dark skin, but I have a yellow undertone mm -hmm. and I have to match it according to the undertone. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all about learning and teaching and, you know. Yeah. And I think studying. consciousness as well. But we didn't call you here to talk about all of this, It's you know, but we had to weigh in a bit. We want to hear about your journey and we want, you know, people to be inspired by your journey because you, you weren't born in Hollywood. None no. Yeah, not at all. All right, we're going to take in a few messages, just going to be back in 30 seconds. And then when we come back, we're chatting with Didi Kelly. Remember, go online to www.fundmetnt.com if you'd like this very inspiring series to continue. Back after this. back this is world talk i'm chatting with dd kelly and remember to share 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 so that uh, folks can know where to join us we're live on facebook and instagram so good to have you with us so yes <laughs> you grew up in baltimore right yes and um tell us what was that like what was it like growing up as a little girl in baltimore so baltimore is one of those poverty stricken towns um back when i was growing up that there was separation. You, you, the whites were over here, the blacks were over here in poverty, and it really wasn't any middle class at yeah. that time. So I grew up very poor. Uh -huh. um, my family was on welfare. Um, we had to resort from handouts a lot for like holidays because we just didn't have the money. Yeah. So it was a struggle. Yeah. And you said earlier that people were separating you because you were darker. And I think, you know, there was a time you were you told, you know, you teased about your braces and that sort of thing. <laughs> um, what was it like uh, being, you know, in the setting where you felt that, did you feel that you were inferior to your sisters, for example, or to anyone else in community at that time? Yes, at that time I did because I didn't look like my sisters because my, me and my sisters had different fathers. Right. So I was always the darker, skinnier, taller Mm -hmm. um, one and my sisters were light skin, long hair, uh, you know, the what black people wanted to be. 
Yeah. Um, back in the day. Now it seems like it switched. Like the browner skin tones are like the thing now. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess I'm popular. <laughs> <laughs> and you um and I I read that you grew with your stepfather. And yes. He, and he was verbally abusive to you. This is yes, what I read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very abusive. Um. Ver both verbally abusive to me, but he was also um, physically abusive to my mother. Oh. So I grew up watching the negative in my household, um, never being told I was lo I've loved, um, just always spewing negative things in me. So I was determined when I was old enough to get out of the house and be on my own that I would change the narrative and I would spread love instead of you know, like what I was taught. So what made you, because it could have gone the other way. You could have just repeated the cycle, right? So what right. made you, I am not going to repeat the cycle. I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I think it was nothing but God. Like God knew that the way that in, in the image that he made me, that I needed to be the opposite of what I saw. Yeah. And I needed to I was here put on this earth for a purpose mm -hmm. and it was to spread love and to be love and to make women feel love. And that's mm -hmm. what I do when they're in my chair. I make yeah. them feel love. And a lot of women you always do. say, you do. Um, <laughs> when I sit in your chair, it's like a whole experience. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just who I am. It's what God made me. Yeah. And at what age did you leave Baltimore to go to Hollywood? And then tell me how that happened. Um, I've been yeah. Okay, so I kept getting fired from all my jobs. Why? So I was like, I can't work a nine to five. I just, I don't know what it is. I just don't like following rules, apparently. Yeah. I, I'm a rebel and I just <laughs> like to create my own rules. Yeah. So, and I loved makeup. So I used to model because I was so tall. I'm 5'11". Mm -hmm. So I used to model I would, and I was a plus size model and I would uh, do my face for the runway and all the girls would be like, oh my gosh, your face looks so good. Can you do my face? And at that time, I didn't really know anything about makeup. I just knew about art because I used yeah. to draw and paint. Right. So there were a lot of D.D. Kelly's going down the runway with one look because I only knew how to do <laughs> my look. Yeah. So then I was like, the last job, which was Allstate Insurance Company, they were doing a big layoff. And I was like, you know what? I need to figure out what it is that I'm passionate about and what it is that I really want to make happen in my life. So mm -hmm. I was like, makeup. Mm -hmm. I like to draw, so I just want to draw on faces. So I stalked the Mac counter and I went up there every day and I would just sit and I would go full beat, full face and buy all this makeup and then come back. And then I got, became friends with all the people there. And they were like, you ever thought about working here? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> so then there it happened. They hired me. I went from, from part time, 10 hours a week to full time. And they tried to make me manager. And mm -hmm. I was like, mm -mm, I'm not manager material. <laughs> Here we go. With the that's taking you back to the eight to four, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it just, at the Met counter is where all the celebrities would know to come right. to get their makeup done in, the, in whatever city they were at. Right. So you were in Baltimore all this time? Yes. Right. So how did you get to Hollywood? And, and who did you work with when you got to Hollywood? So as I was modeling, I used to model for a lady named Rhonda and she owned her own boutique in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So also one, of her, it was a plus size boutique. So one of her other models was Monique, the comedian. Oh. So like we, we were on two different times. Um, so Monique had a contest and it was a plus size contest and it was like 10,000 women entered this contest. And seven of us won. And I just happened to be one of the ones that won. Wow. And she didn't know me. I just submitted myself and I won. So I got flown to LA and had a whole experience. And then when I was here, I was like, I got to live here. Yes. I got to figure out a way to come back. Yeah. So you but, had that determination to take advantage of the opportunities as you saw it. Would yes. you say that? Yeah. Yeah. But at that time, she did not know that I was a makeup artist. Right. She only knew me as a model. Yeah. So a couple years later, um, the lady that we both used to model for ended up being Monique's personal stylist. Mm -hmm. And she promised me, she was like, and if any time I could get you in there and get you in front of Monique again to let her see your makeup skills, I'll do it. So one day I got a call. Well, let me just back up. So it was New Year's Eve. Yeah. I don't remember what year it was, but I prayed. I went to Vegas for New Year's Eve and I prayed. And I remember I said, God, 
when I get back to Baltimore, I'm putting in my two weeks at Mac and I'm going to step out on faith. Yes. And I'm just going to just go for it and let your will be done. Whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. Within that two weeks, I promise you, I got a call from uh, this wardrobe stylist and said, do you know a makeup artist in Chicago? Because Monique needs a makeup artist in Chicago. And I was like, I don't, but I'll fly myself out there, put yes. myself up. And mm -hmm. let her do, I'll do her for free just to let her see my skills. I like what I you said that. there. I like what you said there because you know many times people do not realize that in order to reach to the, the level that you, you do, you have to put yourself out there. You have to yes. pay for certain things to happen. You have to train yourself. You have to push yourself. You know they may see the end goal, but not the process. So I really appreciate uh, you going through the process with us. You know. So when and you, you got to Monique now, uh huh. Go ahead. You have to. I was gonna say you have to invest in yourself. Yes. Yes, First. absolutely. So when you got to Monique, because at this time she's already a star, right? Yes. Yeah. And you're thinking, what happened here? <laughs> I was just in Baltimore <laughs> and now I'm in Hollywood, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what right. happened? Well, yeah. so, then, so then in Chicago, the last day uh, when I did her makeup for her event, we had a conversation and she was like, so tell me about your life in Baltimore. I was like, well, I own a home and I live by myself. She was like, are you married? I was like, no. She was like, are you, do you have any kids? I was like, no. She was like, are you working? I was like, I'm just freelancing at this time. I said, I literally just quit my job at Mac. And she was like, you know what? I'm having this conversation because I'm looking for a makeup artist in LA. What do you think about moving to LA? I said, when? <laughs> she was like, you would pick up and go. I said, as soon as you give me the word, I'm out. Yeah. And two weeks later, all, I packed up all my stuff. My cousin moved into my, my house and, and took over and I was in L.A. just that mm. quick. Wow. Yeah. I think it's important that we have mentors because yes. uh, and even there might be mentors, people who mentor you without realizing they're doing that and people who you look towards to mentor you yes. without. So you've met Oprah, for example. Right. Was, yes. she one, was she one of your mentors? <laughs> uh, well, actually, her makeup artist, Derek yeah. Rutledge, mm -hmm. was one of my mentors. Mm -hmm. And he's from D.C., so we weren't that far apart. Yeah. And the person that he mentored is Kim Lee. And she ended up being my mentor. And at the time when she was my mentor, I had no clue who Derek was. And I had no clue that he was her mentor. Yeah. So it was like I'm third down from Oprah. But then you met her. <laughs> yes. And then I met her and she was so, and I met her a couple of times and, you know, I'm the girl with the purple hair. So everyone knows me as purple hair. So she yeah. was like, I remember seeing you before. Yeah. And I was like, wow, Oprah remembers. And Oprah's yeah. from Baltimore. Well, she's not from Baltimore, but she did a, um, she was on the TV station in Baltimore for a long time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, so what happened next? How did you go from working or there you are with Oprah? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so um, what, how did you go from working with Monique to now everybody? You've worked with so many people. We're going to get and Martin Lawrence, but you've worked with, okay. give us a list because I know you've done like the Braxtons and tell us some of the people you've worked with. So some of the people I've worked with is Gabrielle Dennis that you see a lot now um, on a lot of, she's an upcoming act. I mean, she's an actress. She's been an actress for a long time, but now yeah. she's finally getting recognized. She yes. played Whitney on the Bobby Brown story. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Patti LaBelle, Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight, uh, wow. <laughs> and Patti LaBelle. Patti LaBelle, I realized that from your Instagram, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Mary J. Blige. Yeah. Um, who else? Uh, Kim Whitley. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much everybody in Black Hollywood, I've pretty yes. much had some kind of interaction if, whether I've powdered them for a second or did a whole beat on them. Yes. I've, I've uh, connected. And, it, and I think it becomes from my spirit. Like I come from a loving place yeah. and they feel so comfortable with me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I want to tell people is while you're on set, one of the set etiquettes is listen more than you talk. Right. Meaning they, they may tell you some things when you may hear some things in, you know, about their life that you need to keep secret and the whole world doesn't need to know. And they love that about people yeah. when you, when they can trust you around them, not to put out their information on the blogs. Absolutely. So listen more than you talk. 
Absolutely. So this photograph of you and Common, I know there are a lot of jealous women right there, right now, <laughs> outside, right? <laughs> yeah. So when we were working together, as I said earlier, you had just come off your tour with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence yes. for Bad Boys, right? Tell us it about that. It was amazing. Yeah. So um, when I got the call to be Martin's personal makeup artist, I was like, this, like, God, you are just doing, you're just taking me higher and higher all the time. Like, I'm still happy in like, I can't describe the word, but I still get excited when I'm around celebrities. I don't get starstruck. I just get excited and happy yeah. because I see them doing so well and they're being so big and I get to be a part of that makes mm -hmm. me, uh, you know, it just excites me. So yeah. um, the tour started in Paris, everything first class, first class flight. I stayed at the Four Seasons in Paris. Everything was top notch, like it should be. Whenever mm -hmm. you're with the Glam Squad, like the Glam Squad gets treated most times like the celebrity. So it was like the best trip of my life. I could just imagine. I could just imagine. Was that your last trip? Was that your last face before the lockdown? <laughs> I'm just thinking because it was February, right? That we worked. And by the time I came back to right. that yeah. and Tobago. But you guys, we went into lockdown before you though. We went into lockdown just oh, in March. Okay. Yeah, we, we've been in lockdown since March. We're just now coming out of it. But you you might have gone in um, after us. I'm almost sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, well, I was in Walt Disneyland in March, mm -hmm. the first week in March, because I was going, uh, Steve Harvey has this event that he does with the kids at yeah. Disneyland. So I, I worked for them. So um, I flew to Disneyland, Disney World, and I was very scared. And I was like, because everything was Corona this, Corona that. Wipe down. You should, you should have saw me in the airport. I wiped down all the seats around me. I was like in a hazmat suit pretty much on the plane because I was like prepared for what was coming. Yeah. So I was so nervous in Disney World. And then while I was there, only person that I got to touch was Mickey Taylor from <laughs> Essence Magazine. Yes, yes. And they said we got there on Wednesday. On Thursday, they were like shutting Disney World down on Sunday. I'm sending you guys home. And I was like, Praise God, because I was scared. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going to happen. So mm -hmm. it was a lot of celebrities that were supposed to be at that event, too, that he does. So um, yeah. hopefully next year will be, you know. Different, yeah. So, Didi, let's let's go back to you now and what made you successful. And, you know, we were talking before we came on air about uh, it's not necessarily talking about how to break into Hollywood, because not everyone's going to break into Hollywood. But right. there, will, there would be some place, whether it's in your own country, whether you're looking at this from Ghana or South Africa or wherever in the Caribbean or North America, there might be that place that you want to get to. What are the steps? What are the qualities you would say would be required to get into that place? So everybody has their own little Hollywood. Every country has their own little Hollywood. And my number one thing was networking. I put in the work, I paid my dues, meaning I did a lot of free jobs, mm -hmm. pro bono, so that I could get to the next level and someone would see me. So I would do, I would, I, um, when I moved, first moved to California, when Monique moved me here, I, I was like, I know this is not the end of my journey. I need to make connections. So I contacted uh, local photographers, um, and I got to do free shoots with them. I was like, let me come and test with you. Let me do shoots with you so that we could establish a relationship. Yeah. And then those relationships blossom and bloomed. So everything doesn't have to have a money value on it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just do things from the heart and then it just becomes something, uh, you end up getting paid for the love that you give, you know, for doing things for free. So I always say network, find like local photographers, in your area, shoot with them so that you have things to show people when it is time that you want to, you know, show people your work. Yeah. Um, be kind and treat everybody equally. When I go on sets, I treat everybody the same from the caterer or the PA up to the producer and the director. Be kind and nice to everybody because that PA. That's very true. That is so true. And um, did you have your goals written down or you had them in your minds? How did you, how did you visualize your future? Um, they were in my mind, but then I started making a visual board. Ah. Um, every New Year's, I would make one and I would 
intentionally grab magazines from like dentist offices. Every time I would go to the dentist office or the doctor's office, I would say to the receptionist, can I take these magazines with me? Because I knew when, once New Year came around, I wanted to make a visual board. So, yeah. um, so my intentions were set the whole year because I've always was always thinking of next year, I want to go a little higher. I want to do something a little more. Yeah. Um, so I'm always constantly growing and doing things. Yeah. Um, and everything relates to art. So on your vision board, did you accomplish everything on your vision board, you think? Because you no. had it there. So it's a moving target. Yes. Yeah. 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 So every year I would either update it or do a whole new vision board. Yeah. Now Oprah Oprah was on my vision board. So I ended up meeting her a couple of times, but Patty LaBelle was yeah. on my vision board as well. And look what happened there. There you go. There you go. So let's go back now as an artist. You are a visual artist and you have some yeah. amazing work that I've seen. And you also created masks, some interesting masks, uh, face masks. Uh, yeah. Which, yeah. And was this just because you wanted to be fashionable or was it for uh, for the market? What made you decide to do that? Uh, all the above. <laughs> OK. Uh -oh, all the above. Stuff again. OK. The, Here we um, go. Yeah. Uh -huh. All the above. All the above, I, I created the mask because for one, I knew that we were going to be covered up for a couple months and women were not going to be able to wear lipstick anymore. Right. And you know, we love lipstick. So I was like, I need to think of something to, so that women can still feel pretty and, and wear lipstick. So I created these masks and bling because we all women oh, love bling. That's what it is. Okay. Them. Yeah. That's what it is. So it's a lipstick mask. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. And you um, had a movement called Be What You Post to Be. Be Who You Post. Be Who to You be. Post to Be. Tell us about that. So Be Who You Post to Be um, started by just me watching people trying to be celebrities and trying to be bigger than what they are. Remember the Bow Wow challenge when he would say he had all this money and it was somebody else's money. And then he posted a picture of him on a, plane, a private jet and said it was his own and it wasn't. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to do all that. And what that does is it creates uh, a level for children and teenagers that they, they have to like do whatever is necessary to get to that level when mm -hmm. they can just be wherever they are right now mm -hmm. is, is perfectly fine. You are dope where you are right now. Like, yes. be who you post to be. So yes. on Instagram, I was like, why are all these people faking? Why don't they just be who they post to be? And I was like, I'm going to trademark that. And then I came out with a line of T-shirts and a lot of celebrities have them and it just blew up. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to encourage people to go to your uh, Instagram where they can see a lot of the images that we've been speaking about. Right. That's DD yes. underscore Kelly. Right. Yes. Just DD, DD under underscore Kelly. Didi, I can't believe we're out of time. <laughs> I, know, I know. I think we are. I think we are out of time. Um, but we have enough time for you to tell us what's in store for you for the future. Do you know? Um, my future is always changing. I'm yeah. such an artist and uh, I just don't know what's next, especially after Corona and mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter and all of this. I'm like, what? And then the killer bees, and then we got, I heard Ebola is now, I'm like, oh my gosh, God. There's some of your art, your table. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love that table. So yeah. I created that table during Corona, because I had all this time on my hands, and I always wanted to paint this table of mine. Yes, yeah. And I was like, oh, you know what, this, I finally have time to sit down and actually do it, because this takes time. It took me about three weeks to do it. Yeah. And I did it like step by step and my own pace and it came out absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, your whole world has been thrown upside down. Hollywood is completely closed right now. Yes. And we have no idea when it's going to be opening back up. Right. So it's no just idea. about finding creative ways and new ways of, of, of doing what we do online, yes, digital exactly. or yes. in different spaces. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. It was so good chatting with you, Didi. And I miss you, and I can't wait to see you in person <laughs> again and give you a hug. I know, like a real hug, not a virtual yes. hug. <laughs> not a virtual hug, a real one. It was so good. I can't believe the time has already flown so fast. We're probably going to have another conversation probably in a okay. few weeks' time. Yeah, we could come back and have I a chat. I will come back. 
Yes, and you have to come back to Trinidad and Tobago because the last oh. time you were here was uh, 2013, I believe, with Vivica yeah. and Tatiana. Yes, for the Soka Monarch. Yeah. Oh, it was so fun. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I didn't sleep for like, I don't know how many days, yeah. like three or four days. It was the best time of my life. I was like, wow. And it was your first time to Trinidad and Tobago, I think. Yeah, and my time. first time at Carnival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you guys know how to party. We do. We do. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see what evolves now for 2021, because it's definitely going to be different. The world as we know yeah. it has changed, Didi. It has changed completely. As we, yeah, as we as know it, right. Yeah. Well, I just want you to give a few words of inspiration before I let you go okay. to, you know, maybe that young person might be in Baltimore, might be in here in Trinidad and Tobago, in Africa, wherever they're receiving this. And you're talking to that person who has no idea where they will land, where they will end up. What would you say to them? So my um, advice to anybody who has a, a dream, don't make it a dream, make it... Um, Set it as uh, a goal. So don't, don't say I have a dream, say I have a goal. Start there and then you'll start thinking about a goal, a goal, a goal, and then you, you'll take the necessary steps to reach that goal. Never think that nothing is not, is, that you can't reach it and nothing is possible. Everything is possible. Look at me, I can, I'm a living proof that everything is possible. There's always something new under the sun. Every day that the, that the moon comes up, right behind it is the sun, which means it's something new that you can do. Mm -hmm. Be inspired. Look for inspiration all around you because there's inspiration everywhere, it, whether in a person, whether in uh, reading a book or watching a movie. But never give up on your goals. Yeah. Keep dreaming and turn that into a goal. Wonderful, wonderful advice there, Didi Kelly, Hollywood makeup artist and makeup artist to the stars. Mwah! Sending a big Mwah. kiss for you. Can't wait to see you. Thank you so much, Didi. You're so welcome. Bye. Yeah, bye. And that was so wonderful, Didi Kelly. Great person, great personality, and a very inspiring story. Remember, you can support this series by logging on to www.fundmetnt.com to keep this series going as we continue to speak with persons from around the world inspiring stories. I'm going to be speaking to a young man who was a refugee uh, in Africa. He was in two refugee camps and walked his way from one country to the next. He was just 10 years old and now at the age of 21 he's already written his life story. That's going to be coming up so you got to go on the YouTube channel and subscribe for some of the programs that you might have missed and for future ones to come. But I want to thank you very much for being in our company here on Facebook. We had a little bit of technical problems at the top but that's what we get when we are on these lives but we know that you came back and thank you so much for coming back those of you on Facebook and Instagram you can check this uh, episode a little later on on YouTube but right now I want to leave you with a song from someone from my country Trinidad and Tobago Jay Prince he's our video spotlight and I'll see you next time Put them to Jesus Cause I'm alone can heal us Him say we got to dip in the water So point me the way to the Jordan River Get your tour bus, take your maxi Now I have a taxi, take a Uber Make we dip, dip, dip in the water Everybody just dip Do the name and dip Rock and come in and dip Give them the bongo dip Skip to the beat and dip Give them the name and dip Crazy praise and dip Everybody just dip This is a normal dance So it's not a wild out dance Everybody push up your hand If you know that your problem done He made a smile from your frown Turn it up like messenger song And when you find the Jordan River Listen the words of me song and dip Do the name and dip Rock and come in and dip Give them the bongo dip Skip to the beat and dip Dance and worship in thunder If you can't dance, push up your hand To the left, to the right, hands swung there The beat a go hold on ya You got to lead it, you can't make it lead ya So we a keep it clean when we a worship So them can't pass me past